Hi, halfway through March, so it's time for um, to have a look back at the books that I've read so far this month. And I've read seven, a mixed bag. Um, there were two from the Carnegie Long List, one from the Women's Prize for Fiction Long List, and the other three were, were ARCs. So the first one that I read was I Must Betray You by Ruta Sapitis, and this is on the Carnegie Prize Long List. And it's set in 1989 Romania, um, in the run-up to the execution of Ceausescu. And it's about, it's told from the point of view of um, a teenager. And it really documents what life was like under this regime and the fear of being informed upon, not knowing who you could trust, who was watching you, who was going to report you. And it is a, a really sort of chilling look at what life was like there. And it leads up to the execution of Ceausescu and, and what happens. And it is harrowing at times and the brutality in it is, is awful. But it is an excellent read. The next one was a thriller. It's Annette Galliarg that comes out tomorrow, actually, the 16th of March. And it's The Half Burnt House by Alex North. I read Alex North's, the, Alex North's The Whisper Man, and I love that one. This one is uh, um, slightly more complicated. There's two, there's lots of timelines. There's different characters. You have to concentrate for this one. Um, you start off with... Um, Katie Shaw is a teenager who decides that she's going to spend an afternoon with her boyfriend instead of walking her younger brother home. And that is the day that her younger brother is brutally attacked by this guy called Michael Hyde. And then we move on years later when Katie is married to this same boyfriend and they have a daughter. Um, her brother is an addict and he's gone missing. We've also got a different character. We've got a retired professor, Alan Hobbs, um, who is brutally murdered on the day that he dismisses all of his staff <clears throat> as though he knew it was coming. And you've got all these different threads, including an old serial killer, the, the, sort of the historical hist a serial killer case. And there's lots of threads, and you need to remember who, what and why but it is fascinating to see everything come together. The next one is also Annette Galliarc, which comes out on the 28th of this month, the 28th of March, and it's And Put Away Childish Things by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And this is such a fun read. Um, I hadn't read anything by Adrian Tchaikovsky before. It's a novella, so it's a very quick read. And you've got Harry, who's a TV presenter, um, a, a children's TV presenter whose grandmother wrote children's books about this magical kingdom Underhill and one day he meets a fawn in the garden a magical creature then he gets kidnapped by these middle class people who believe he's the heir to Underhill and then he's asked by a private investigator to a look at a wardrobe. It's a book for everybody that has ever wanted to step into a wardrobe and go into a world like Narnia. It's, it's got that, it's got a really fun feel to it. Um, and it's humorous, it's set against the pandemic. And I, I really enjoyed that one. It, was, it made me smile. Next one is also Annette Galliarc. And this one again comes out on the um, the end of this month. And this one was a real romantic type book. Um, the Echo of Old Books by Barbara Davis. And it was like sitting in a cinema watching one of the old black and white movies. There was that sort of vibe to it. Um, you've got Ashlyn, who's a rare book dealer. And she can put a hand on a book and feel the emotions of the people that owned the book before. And when she finds, comes across this book, 
with no author's name and no publisher details, she can feel from this book the bitterness, sense of bitterness, betrayal, love almost. And then she finds a companion book. Again, no author, no publisher. And she realises that these two books are companion pieces. It's one, it's two halves of a love story. A love story that ended badly. And you've got the two different versions of this love story in these two books. And it's reading these because they're set in, um, in the run-up to the Second World War. And it's reading these that gives you this sort of cinematic black and white feel. And Ashlyn wants to try and find these people. Are they still alive? What happened to them after this love affair ended? A uh, lovely story. And it gave me a real, well, yeah, it's like stepping back in time almost. The next one was this one, Needle by Patrice Lawrence. And this is on the Carnegie Prize long list. The short list is actually announced this week, I think. So we'll see how many of the ones I've read end up on the short list because I've still got quite a few of the long lists still to read. So this one is about uh, Charlene, who's a black teenager in foster care. Um, her mother's dead and her little sister lives with her little sister's dad and he wants Charlene to have no contact with her whatsoever. Charlene finds solace in knitting, hence the title, Needle. And the, she finds that the repetitive click, click, click of the needles is, is calming for her when she gets stressed. And she's knitting this special blanket, a dinosaur blanket for her sister. But through the book, it's you see her make different choices, wrong choices. You can understand why she's making the choices. You don't agree with them, but you can see exactly what is going through her head at that time. And she finds herself sitting in a police cell. And so it's her story. It's a story of um, how she, can she say sorry when her freedom's at stake? And it highlights the prejudice that some of the kids in foster care can find. The next one was another Net Galley arc, and this one comes out on the 6th of April, and it's Dust Child. And it's set in 1969 and 2016 Vietnam. So you've got, um, and it's a story of the Dust Children, which was the name given to the offspring of American GIs and Vietnamese women. So we're taking to 1969, when the war is going on, and we're in 2016. We've got four points of view. Fong is the offspring of a black American GI and a Vietnamese woman. He's um, married with two children and he's desperate to get to America to try and find his father. He was abandoned and he never knew his parents. Um, Dan is an American GI and he left um, a pregnant girl in 1969 and now 2016 he's going back to Vietnam to see whether he can find her and the child and then in 1969 you've got two sisters Trang and Kina I think you say the name I'm not sure and it's their story they leave their parents rice fields to go and work in a bar um, to make money to pay their parents' debts, they naively think that all they have to do is sit and drink tea with the soldiers. And it's their story as well. It's very, very, very well researched. And it's a story, and it's interesting to see how all these tie together. And the final one was Pod by Lilan Paul. And this is off the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. And it's written from the point of view of dolphins. Now, in the beginning, I did struggle with this. I, I wasn't sure whether I was going to like it and I ended up loving it. Um, it really, really draws you in. And um, yeah, beautifully written. The descriptions of the oceans and these creatures. You follow Ia, who's a spinner dolphin, who leaves her pod. You've got Google, who's a military trained dolphin. You've got Rorkel, who's a whale, 
um, who's alone after a tragic event um, and he's singing his whale song to try and get to make people safe and you've got all these descriptions of the ocean and the book is telling us about what's happening to the oceans and you've got these descriptions of the oceans through the dolphin's eyes and in the beginning you can't see what is happening because the dolphins can't understand what is happening they can't understand what they're seeing but as the book carries on you the reader realize and you find that you know more than the dolphins you can actually see what what the the dolphins are seeing and can understand what is happening and you you follow here and you root for her and ah oh, i was in tears at the end such such a lovely book so there are seven books for the first half of the month so, um, funny enough i never had any fives i had three four point seven fives but no fives this time though although i loved um three of the books to give them 4.75 I didn't there was something that stopped them getting a five but the book of the month so far has to be pod because the way that it left me feeling at the end absolutely beautiful so we'll see um what I do in the second half of the month how many others from the women's prize I can read how many others from the Carnegie prize I can read so have a good time Happy reading. Take care.